I do want to talk a little bit about AI. I would be remiss not to mention AI on this panel. Um, That's almost like zero trust. I know. I was like, <laughs> speaking of buzzwords, yeah. It's always a little bit Princess Bridey. Like, yes. I keep using that word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not thinking the big AI. Um, would love to know how you guys see AI changing the concept of risk management, if it is, and if you do see it doing that, is it changing it in a good way or a bad way? But maybe first we can also take a step back and say, and you know, are we seeing AI implementation um, within organizations and like how are the CISOs approaching that issue? I mean, I think it depends on how you define AI. Certainly we're seeing machine learning. Um, and I think in sort of the colloquial definition of AI, we're seeing folks take advantage of, you know, the ability to extract analytics from vast portions of data and then be able to um, write automations and other actions upon them. And so I think right now um, that's kind of the state. We are certainly not at a state where, you know, there are sentient uh, beings that are, you know what I mean, that are computer based. Um, but I think that uh, for uh, there's a couple ways that I think it's going to impact or is already impacting the security field. One is just democratizing insecurity. So like you can go query your Microsoft Copilot and find the over permissioned, you know, Salesforce app, and then be able to get it. And you used to have to really work at that. You know what I mean? Uh, and now it's it, it's a shortcut for folks, and you don't have to like know how to write a script to do it. Um, so you can query in natural language, find uh, less secure stuff, and exploit it. Um, I also think that you know we continue to see um, the kinds of open source and other commercially available AI models uh, have varying degrees of usability, let's say, in a field like security where um, accuracy is so important. Uh, and so you know there's a, a company I advise called Encrypt AI that helps folks just pick a model, like an LLM that they can use, no, like based on its imperfections. So if you're OK with the fact that this one it rates high for bias, but it also has, like right now, there is no such thing as like a perfect AI model that always yields accurate results. And so I think you know we're kind of um, using AI at the same time that we need to be defending against it in a lot of ways, or at least um, thinking uh, carefully about where and how we can allow it to interact with us. And that's true from a security perspective in terms of like, you know, the accuracy of how folks are interpreting results, but also everything that every piece of data that we're going to allow it to have access to. You know, like there's a lot of different levels here on which we're actually protecting ourselves from the AI itself. And we may be using AI to do that. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's not a hopeless state, but it's just complicated. It's convoluted for sure. I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion on it because I, I'm not in a position, my company hasn't adopted it very well yet. And we've, we've also put out a statement saying we're, we're not really there yet. <laughs> and it's hard to make an opinion on that because we need to be. Right. AI, we've been using it forever, whether or not we understand that that's what we've been, we've been using. But automated tools now, automated attacks, whatever they are, um, is something that we can't not adopt and, and quickly. Um, it's, it's anything new is scary. Anything new we go fast into is scary. Um, and my company needs to do a better job of understanding that. And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but but I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I think so, you know, the majority of what we're using is really deep ML, right? Like machine, machine learning, right? And so <clears throat> the, huh? there's some of the, um, uh, I'll, I'll go down this path, right? You know, the military did this um, study when they were looking at AI and ML, right? And they said, okay, how do we, because this is what the military does, how do we eliminate um, threats faster, right? And, um, and so they put this um, ML in place and it found the best way to eliminate um, uh, uh, threats. Right, and so what it found is, over time, the general was the bottleneck, and it went and ordered the general to be 
terminated. Get out of the yeah. bed. <laughs> right? Because it, it, the, it's, not thinking, it's not thinking from a sentient being point of view. It's thinking from what is, you've given me a task. This is my task. Yeah. I am going to do it the best I can. Yeah. Right? And so those are the things that you, we have to think about going down the path of how are we going to use it and what are those guardrails, right? And, and what are those checks and balances? I definitely think it is a game changer from, you know, going back to what you were saying about burnout, going back to what we're saying about the inevitable shortage of, um, you know, people that can come into this, the information security realm and, and quickly get up to speed, right? I think there's some amazing tools that are using ML that can allow me to bring in early in career people into my organization that can get them up to speed because they can ask the prompt, what, what's going on in my organization? What do I need to prioritize today? What is my biggest threat today, right? And as they're doing that, they're learning where those connection points are. So they're learning as they go, um, but they're efficient into the process almost immediately, right? You still have to teach them how the, the whole organization works, but it's a way to get people into our pipelines, our, our hiring pipelines faster. Um, I think it's also um, a way that we can now start to drive actual paths for our employees, right? And for our, um, our, our people that we help to lead and we want to, um, you know, help them move forward in their career. Because so now you're not just doing this automated task all the time and that's the only thing you can do because you're overwhelmed by it. Now you're, I want to look at, you know, maybe writing some more ML. I want to look at how do we take this and fix this at the root cause. You get them to start to expand and really think about uh, uh, innovation in, in problem solving, right? And that's what we need in cybersecurity, right? We need people that can problem solve quickly, be innovative, not, you're not always gonna follow the straight line because it's never a straight line. Um, I think the other part of ML and AI is the the bad guys using using it, right? And so everybody wants to write code faster. Well, oh, let me go put code on, you know, it, it's generating bad code, bad code. right? It's, bad, it's generating vulnerabilities. It's generating, and so, right, exactly. And so how do you, um, the business wants to run fast, the coders need to code fast, like how do you do that? So um, how do you ensure that where they're getting some of that information um, and that information is, is valid and vetted um, before you hang your hat on it, right? Um, and so I think that there's, there's challenges. I think it is definitely going to be a game changer for business as a whole and a game changer for the security field. But I do think that there are definite hurdles and definite pitfalls that we can um, quickly fall into if we don't go down the path of taking a beat and saying, how are we using this and to what degree? Yeah, I mean, and props to the CISOs for understanding that and, and having to carry that load to um, upper management. It, you know, this is something that's going to allow us to do a lot of things that are scary, the automated response, um, but then we have to tune. Is it the right thing to do? at the right time? Is it going to do anything to operations? You know, that, that's very powerful stuff, and we can do it now. Um, but there has to be that, you know, that decision point. Is it the right thing to do? Is it going to affect our operations? What, is it, what does it do for risk? Um, it's still all about understanding your organization. That's where I think our very strong CISOs, you know, are super important for, of course, the risk is AI being used against us, we have to fight fire with fire. That, I don't think that's a, that's an option. Right. But we have Agreed. to we have to understand how Agreed. to use it. Yeah, and we're not going to get to some like magical end state where we we say we've reached AI security or something. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Like this is an ongoing Battle. gardening. Right. Yeah, that we are committing to. Yep. 
Right. And I mean, you mentioned external threats, but then also like the data governance piece of it, too, is is something that was widely discussed at RSA. And I know, you know, the EU just has in, is in the process of rolling out the AI Act. And I think there's a lot of eyes on kind of what that's going to mean for all of this. So, you know, I don't know if you guys were looking at that as well, but love yeah, I mean, there. Um, for my organization, um, we were in the southeast. Uh, we don't sell outside of the United States, but I've been in many organizations where I have to deal with GD GDPR. And, um, you know, y Europe, good, better, and different, has been leading the way, right, and leading the charge. W what I think is somewhat um, challenging for CISOs in the United States is we don't all act together as the United States and here's your privacy policy and here's your AI policy. So it's going to be left up to the states and, and that's great, but it does make it much more difficult because how do you disclose, what do you do? It all depends on where it is, what it is, how it is. And if we go down that same path with AI, that becomes very tricky because my computers may be sitting here in Arizona or in Nevada or wherever. My people are sitting in some other place. My dad is sitting somewhere else. So which jurisdiction am I worrying about, right? And so these are the things that um, I think are important for our leaders to kind of think about. I know they're trying to get to the right spots, but sometimes um, so that they can say they're doing something for their constituents, they kind of are driving that um, to make it much more difficult for us, right? Um, at least in, in my view, I think that that's what it is. And, and you end up spending a lot of money to get to the highest level, um, where if you could, we get to one singular point, we don't have to keep recreating the wheel. So just, just my thought. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, given, so I do think that philosophical and legal and ethical approaches to data vary really widely, especially um, outside of the United, I mean, like it, it, between and among countries. Um, but I also think that like, you know, look at GDPR, like it's not like they solve data privacy with that. In fact, there's a lot of unintended consequences. The US now has a data privacy statute in every state and that hasn't solved everything either. But you know what I mean? I think, again, I think it's worth the, the national conversation and international conversation around sort of like what world we wanna live in and how we wanna have this relationship with the technology that like, remember, like exists to serve us. You know what I mean? Like the tech is built by humans for humans. So I think having that conversation in a healthy way is good. I, uh, you know, I don't know whether a national AI statute is something that we would expect from a, I mean, like certainly not from our Congress, whether it would actually um, benefit us. You know, like I think the, the, not danger, but the, yeah, the danger here is that a lot of times the way that things get implemented and the behaviors that it drives are what matter a lot. And so as security you know, execs here, what we're constantly thinking about is not just all the contemplated kind of like good business outcomes that we're pushing toward, but like, you know, where are folks gonna take advantage of the margins? And I think that's, you know, like the, the concern has to be on, on all of that.